There are a range of CSR theories that try and explain either why we should pursue corporate social responsibility or explain why we actually do it. Normative theories focus on what we ought to do or what we should be doing. They focus on what is right from a particular perspective. Normative stakeholder theory is an example of a specific normative theory. From this perspective, it is ethical or appropriate to focus on all stakeholders, not just the shareholders. This is based on a sense of duty and values, which indicates that all stakeholders are valuable and worthy and should be treated with respect. This is different to treating stakeholders properly because you think it'll be in your own best interest. So it takes a deontological perspective, which means the intention behind the action is just as important as the action itself. A positive theory is one that is used to describe how people and organisations actually behave. They are descriptive and are used to help predict activity rather than to advise people how they ought to behave. Institutional theory is an example of a positive theory that explains why organisations end up performing CSR and corporate accountability. The underlying premise here is that organisations are influenced by peer pressure. If other organisations in the industry start acting responsibly, then they will imitate this action. The starting point may be a coercive action by a powerful lobby group or the government. This gets one or more organisations moving and then mimetic behaviour, which is the mimicking or copying of others, leads to group norms and peer pressure about how an organisation should behave. All of these actions together explain why competitors start acting in a similar way. Homogenization or isomorphism are the terms used to describe this process. Enlightened self-interest can be considered as both a normative and a positive theory. Using an ethical egoism perspective, this means that from a normative perspective, it is ethical for an organization to pursue its own best interests. And this often involves being nice to stakeholders just so that you can get what you want from them. Enlightened self-interest is also a descriptive or positive theory which describes how companies actually behave. They pursue CSR, but only because it's useful to them, not because it has intrinsic worth of its own. Sometimes the word greenwashing is used to describe corporate reporting and action that tries to show how good a company is in relation to CSR when the true motives are more self-interested. Managerial stakeholder theory is a more cynical approach to looking after stakeholders, and this involves identifying those with the most power and influence. Steps are taken to work closely with these powerful interest groups, but the main underlying reason is linked to manipulation and gaining self-interested benefits. So this approach explains CSR activity and helps show why an organisation may care for some stakeholders, but not others, especially those who are weak and unable to influence the outcome. To recap, there are a range of ethical theories that help demonstrate reasons why we might consider CSR and corporate accountability. These range from enlightened self-interest to normative and managerial stakeholder theory through to institutional theory.